and this girl, Chris Kinnell. Everybody, I just want to say this out to all of you. You guys, um, this year has been overwhelming, and uh, the ESP booth is, uh, you know, every year it blows my mind when I came over to the company three years ago that every year it just gets more and more crazy, and all you dudes out there make our lives that much better. So thank you to all of you guys out here making the ESP booth the coolest place to be in this entire clusterfuck called name. What about what about the girls? You said dudes. Do and do that. And do I think he included the girls in that statement. Yes, yeah. yeah. too. There you go. So, um, let's see here. It was about a less than a year ago, right? About, about a year ago when you called me up and we decided to start working together on what is uh, this is the first prototype? This is not the one that's coming out, but it's close to it. Um, about a year ago, um, Brian called me up and we decided to start working on uh, a brand new design from start to finish. And uh, I'd like Brian to tell that story because it's awesome. And uh, because of, because of guys like Brian makes my job that much better because it makes it easy and I'm very proud to say that our artist roster at ESP is not based on popularity it's based on relationships and it's based on friendship and people that are no longer with ESP is because we're no longer friends it's that simple and we 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 know each other we talk about family it's not always just about guitar we talk about our kids we talk about birthday parties because we take these these relationships very seriously and I just want to give everybody, just give it up for Brian here, just making everybody feel that much better. Thank you. Thank you guys. Um, man, I'm blown away. You know, I just, uh, first I just want to say thank you to Ibanez, you know, all the years, and we're all, you know, everyone's good with each other and everything, and uh, Ibanez is awesome, and so big ups to them just for being really cool about it. Um, but I remember just way back in the day, just me and Monkey and Fieldy, you know, we're playing the the Sunset Strip and all that, and uh, and just wanting to do this for a living, you know? Actually, not even worrying about doing it for a living. Just feed us top ramen and we'll play music, you know what I'm saying? And that was our thing. And a lot of you guys just, it's like the love that you have for music. I mean, I just remember getting into all these bands when I was a kid, and I, that's all I wanted to do. You know, I didn't have the, the perfect life. I didn't have the worst life either, but you know, my guitar and my music was everything. All the way from, I was in bed and I wrote this stuff down today. All the way from 1980, Queen, the game came out. ACDC, Back in Black in 1980, Ozzy Osbourne, oh, Blizzard yeah. of Oz, Women and Children First, Van Halen. It bit me that year, 1980, that was it. And then, you know, go forward to 81 with Def Leppard, High and Dry, Motley Crue, Too Fast for Love, Y&T, Triumph, Rush, Exit, Stage Left, all that stuff. 82, Iron Maiden, Number of the Beast. And I was learning some solos, even though Korn doesn't do solos that much, but uh, <laughs> I, was, I was becoming a little shredder at like 11, 12 years old. Um, 82, Iron Maiden, Number of the Beast, Judas Priest, Screaming for Vengeance, Kiss Creature, Scorpions, Blackout, Ozzy, Speak of the Devil, 83, Motley, Shout of the Devil, Death Leopard, Pyromania, Iron Maiden, Peace of Mind, Holy Diva! Dude, all that stuff, a lot of you guys, you know, some of you are young, I see you, but back then, dude, that was just the fuel that fired this thing called just addiction to metal, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna name some more, I don't care. You gotta wait. <laughs> YNT, Meat Street, Rat Out of the Cellar came out in 83. Queen Drank, uh, Quiet Riot, yeah, that was a big one. Um, 1984, uh, Rat Out of the Cellar, that was their big one. Maiden, Power Slave, Scorpions, Love at First Sting. Twisted Sister came out, I, I bet that bug. Stay Hungry, uh, Dawkin, that was like my main band. Yeah. From, I'd say probably 14 to like 18 or something, Dawkin was just every album. Queen Drake, that, that, uh, I think that was their big one too. TNT, White Snake, Striper, Last in Line came out that year. Van Halen, uh, I wrote Boo there because that was a 1984 album and I was like, wait, where'd the guitar go? <laughs> so yeah, but I mean, it was still big. We were watching on MTV every, every day. And then 1985, from then on, it was just like Motley, Loudness, I got into Loudness. Yeah. Uh, White Snakes and Skid Row a little bit, Leather Wolf, Nir and then Nirvana, Faith the More, Metallica, all that stuff. Faith Just the, the uh, yeah, that's what really got us going. But um, 
you know, it's just that, that fucking music that I just wanted to play. And so, uh, yeah, I've been just got it started like on the strip and what, what dreams came true, you know, because I played different guitars. I, I played uh, Charvel when I was a kid and I had Ibanez when I was 12. And so that just got us going. And so after all these years, a couple decades, you know, playing in corn and everything, um, there was a couple people, key people that left Ibanez and everything. And, and uh, I didn't really know too much of the people there and uh you know all over the years me and monkey we really uh we appreciate other guitars and we played other guitars on every album and so you know i just thought it was a good time and i was talking to some people and i always uh looked up to esp and i was like a fan you know and so i heard about chris here and uh and so somebody told i think i think it was nick rascalinix you know he's talking to stefan from deftones and, and just we were talking about guitars and and they told me that he's really cool, and so I looked him up on the internet, and I was like, "Hey, I know they that were dude." Wrong. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, I know that dude." Once I saw his picture, and so I called him up, and right then I was getting bit by that bug of this Everton thing, because dude, when you play low strings and everything, like me and Monkey, just corn that corn sound, you got tuning issues, especially live, all kinds of like you're in you're in the winter, in the summer, and then like outside it's freezing. The back, the back doors to the arena are open. They're tuning, and then you go on stage, and all the sweat box of the crowd is there, and your tuning's just going. Even like year after year, the best tuning that I had actually was when I went baritone, um, six string with my project Love and Death with, uh, with. Um, thank you, <laughs> thank you to you four people. But, uh, <laughs> um, but I swear the tuning was just way better. I don't know if it's a longer neck, so I tried that approach with the. Uh, the Ibanez and uh, it was better but still I just never had that that thing where I didn't have to worry about tuning you know what I'm saying and so that Evertune was really really something that I, I jumped at and then uh, I found out that I was like oh you can't bend strings though it's just gonna sound like some, some kind of robot thing and uh, once I found out that you could I'm still learning it I'm no expert to Evertune but that you could tune it to where it bends like a half a step still right. I was like, oh, that's 